For my final project at university, I felt the need to thoroughly explore myself. I was approaching what would be a milestone in my life, and I realized that I had to look into myself to understand my place, both in the world and in the industry. Therefore, my project began as a self-analysis or an exploration. The use of my body became a canvas onto which were portrayed the light and the dark of humankind. The creative process behind permitted me to transform myself from a subject into an object, to distort my features and become an unidentifiable figure so that the audience could sympathize with what was portrayed. So my project is called Hiding in Plain Sight, which is a zine and self-portrait series based on my personal experience with body dysmorphic disorder. Um, the concept aims to convey the two conflicting feelings that I battle with in daily life, one being this desire to be confident and stand out um, versus the anxiety and self-consciousness that comes with body dysmorphia, um, causing this need to hide. Um, so I began my creative process by picking out symptoms and words that I've experienced from the disorder and then I was wanting to translate it visually using my own body. So I used props and objects with my own body to sort of convey these emotions um, and this kind of became my way of working throughout the rest of my project. Um, and Although it was quite a serious sub subject matter, um, I was wanting to convey it in a more playful, abstract way, um, using these objects and props um, to almost disconnect and revisualize the disorder for me um, in a more light-hearted, uplifting way. So um, yeah, I hope it might do the same for others relating to the disorder as well. My final major project consisted of a short film and a series of images that I presented and curated into an exhibition in my living room and streamed it on social media. Um, my project was based around the idea of catfishing and pretending to be someone else online and the film was about a man who became very unhappy in his own life and so he started pretending to be women online for gratification and kind of admiration to make him feel better about himself in his own life. Um, my creative process, I kind of start off um, having some sort of idea of a story that I want to tell and I create characters to fit around that story that I want to create. Um, it usually has some sort of element of like dark humour so I'll kind of use sound and music and the post-production editing process uh, with the timing of the video to kind of have an injection of dark humour even though it's often um, about something that's quite serious like kind of pretending to be other people online. Candy is a beautiful, pampered woman. Men like her very much. They like her so much because she is so beautiful that they give her money just to speak with her. She gives me so much pleasure, she makes me very happy and lots of men happy too. She has made me loved on the internet. I then kind I then um, link up with makeup artists and prosthetics artists and we test a lot of different ideas for the characters. So I'll kind of design characters but collaborate with the makeup artists. Um, to create a final look of the character, um, ready for the production days. Um, so I always kind of have a, a script almost, a rough script that I work to on production days in order to have the footage that will work for post-production. Understand Yourself is a mixed media exploration of identity. The project looks into struggles I face within upbringing and ideologies concerned with the Black British diasporic experience, community, heritage and male fragility. The ideation stages of my creative process came about quite organically in the sense that I knew I wanted to speak on things from a personal standpoint and use my lived experiences as an anchor for my narrative. My project was about the freedom based on gratitude from the older generation. Uh, as I researched more and more, uh, I could discover the fact that 
younger generation have some forgotten duty to understand what older generation wanted to deliver to us. Uh, in order to see healthy society, um, I believe that we have to learn hidden value in right way rather than interpreting our own way, which is more comfortable to think. Um, in method of my research, I look for loads of Japanese manga, which is comic book. Uh, and I try to compare it with reality that we are experiencing. Because uh, I believe that manga used to reflect the real society because for the Japanese people, um, manga, uh, the culture itself, uh, it was one of the methods to overcome the tragedy tragedy for them like because they passed a like really sad history as we know uh therefore i wanted to use those value to resolve the tangled political rela relationship between south korea and japan even though it's really risky issue for now so i want to i want it to be kind of hero position in this circumstance people journal is a personal and professional project it's a lo-fi zine that celebrates Hackney Week residents, Hackney Week locals, at the midst of gentrification. It's sort of compilation, observation of my own time. I would say it's a personal diary. Considering that area has been deprived since beginning of last century, it was factory-made, factory-based environment. And in this day, it's artist community, and it's a place where uh, people seek inspiration and they seek a new way of living, unconventional living. Project AIM was to set um, a question, does environment somehow impact your professional or creative practice? I proposed the concept to my project contributors, six different discipline creatives, um, locals that have been around from various uh, times. There were some people that lived in the area for uh, six, ten years and there were some that had been living here only for about two or a year or so. Uh, from that perspective, I proposed uh, three interactive tasks. I asked my participants to um, make a visual response in photography in their own environment. Uh, I provided them a 35mm disposable camera and digital um, medium of their choice to create a photograph that would speak about their private place, whether it's studio, whether it's office space, whether it's bedroom. I was asking them to um, respond to their privacy and respond to the intimacy with the house they live in. The fundamental part of my project to realize this personal skill and passion of creative direction, creative production, and that truly shifted my personal practice because now I was not only thinking as um, creator in fashion imagery but I was thinking about bigger picture and in this context my picture was more of a documentary piece. What I realized is that it was really difficult to shift an idea um, to something that is out of my control. After creating these three interactive tasks I was still in the process of developing my response because initially when I changed my concept the project contributor became initial designer. That kind of symbiosis between uh, the project contributor and myself, the trust and the direction I was going for made me realize my own outcome. The outcome never came at the first stage when I was talking with my contributors. That was still a process where I was developing my idea. So I went back to my initial sense 
and I trusted in the process and from there I created visual responses in collage art um, responding to the themes that my contributors created to the moment that was final product that in between process was something that was created uh, just because of documentation of the steps and I think that's the biggest lesson for me and that's something I would suggest to anyone else to document every step of the journey and that's truly called the process and that's how you trust yourself when you really see the step you've been going through. Um, I think that's the main um, lesson from the whole project. Within my personal practice project, I wanted to explore the meaning of being human. Our subconscious and conscious mind influence our physical body. With the use of performance art and digital technology, I was able to transform the body into a figure beyond human, an abstract being which lives within all of us. So I began my project with the theme of body dysmorphia, with it being so personal to me. Um, but this led into wider themes of mental health and body image, which are so important today. Um, and I hope my personal exploration um, can kind of shed light onto how these disorders to do with body image and mental health can really affect someone's everyday life in a way that might not be so obvious to other people. The main themes are kind of gender identity, um, self-portraiture, those kind of are the main themes. Um, I found it interesting as a woman to be portraying a man, portraying three other women. Um, so I looked heavily at kind of uh, gender performance as well and how I can put across in mannerisms and uh, the way that I use sound and wording in the post-production process as well, um, how I can put across that it is like gender inception, like a woman playing a man playing three women. Um, and those are kind of the main themes, self-portraiture. I always play all of the characters in my own projects. Um, I'm very inspired by the likes of Cindy Sherman. I find it really interesting to kind of dive into these characters and like pretend to be other people. And I, I think it was really interesting that as someone who likes to do these projects where I'm pretending to be other people, making a film about a man who was pretending to be other people was again really interesting. Some of the themes I discuss are reoccurring topics I often explore in my work, and I guess they have become a crucial part of my vision as a creative practitioner. But it was about bringing all these circulating ideas into a structure an audience could understand and connect with, and I guess that was a difficult part. I really had to build a body of research consisting of cultural and political text as references and looking into different creatives and attending talks and exhibitions to see how they've articulated their personal journey within their work. Once I built that understanding, I began to envision the physicalities of the project and I kind of followed my own flow, my own direction from there. These unprecedented circumstances definitely weighted onto all of us in various ways. The creative industry, as many others, has been affected from it. In regard to my creative practice, the hardest challenge has been to find a scope or the will to work and create, to look towards better times and finding something to gain from the pandemic. I personally learned how to become resourceful and adapt to any circumstances to then achieve an higher goal. I was quite fortunate in the sense that I had chosen to do self-portraits before the pandemic happened, so I could kind of continue working in a similar way to how I was. Um, although towards the end of my project um, I did have to make some changes. Um, my final shoot um, I had planned to take place on a location with a photographer which was obviously cancelled so in adapting this I decided I would make some still life sculptures um, using my own clothing 
in a studio room that I set up inside this room actually <laughs> um, so I then I took photos of these sculptures and digitally superimposed them onto self-portraits of me that I'd taken outside near my house um, so yeah I definitely shifted to a more digital way of working but in the end it worked out quite nicely so I'm glad <laughs> originally I was only going to submit my film and I usually just have a series of images that are shot during the production as well that I sub like submit or display with the film itself um, because I'd already shot my film before uh, COVID-19 lockdown happened in the UK um, I was very lucky and I had the material to work from in order to actually uh, make the film that I had planned in the first place um, but it kind of had me reflect a bit more and I was thinking about all of my peers that weren't as lucky um, in being able to get all their work done and what they had planned done before this happened so I kind of wanted to take a step back and look at how my project would have turned out had I not been able to do that beforehand so I decided to take all four characters that I created with a full team with a makeup artist, prosthetics artist, a videographer and a photographer that I did before the lockdown happened and recreate them in my flat only with the things I already had available to me um, and doing all the makeup and the set myself in my flat um, and then reshooting over Zoom with a photographer which was also another method that I hadn't used before um, and then also my plan was to hold an exhibition with the stills and uh, screen my film um, but hold that in an actual exhibition space um, because I wasn't able to do that, I decided to um, print my images on a printer at home and stick them up on our living room wall here in my flat. And then I streamed the exhibition online on Instagram Live um, to about 60 people. Um, and I also premiered my film on Instagram Live and then I kind of had an open discussion online about my work. And that was something that I definitely wouldn't have considered. Um, if I had just stuck to my original plan if COVID-19 hadn't happened. So um, it kind of shifted my entire project and added this whole extra layer to it that wouldn't have even occurred if COVID-19 hadn't happened. So in a way, it actually worked out really well for me because I feel like it just added a depth to my work that wasn't previously there. My creative practice shifted quite immensely. I guess like the core values of my early intentions were still very present and it was important to me that they were, but the way in which I portrayed these ideas had to adapt and evolve. I originally intended to produce two editorials and an installation within a natural space that my audience could interact with. I also had collaborators in place, but because of lockdown, it was really impossible to work in this way and all my collaborations actually fell through. So I really had to start thinking outside the box and utilize the very limited resources I had around me I started to introduce new mediums into my practice, such as still life, spoken word and collage, which in a way pushed me outside my comfort zone and provoked growth within my own abilities. I could have a more, honestly, I could have a more uh, kind of excuses to spend my own time. So I could read loads of comic books and I could watch loads of movie at the same time. So it was really proper time to work in home. So. Yeah, it was really useful in some way. To other students and creative who have been impacted by the pandemic, I would suggest to look at these restrictions as challenges. Utilize them in your favor in order to explore, experiment and discover original and unusual aspects of yourself and of your practice. Learn and challenge yourself into new media, new platform and new path. Constantly educate yourself and make work that can educate others. I think my advice would be just focus on what you can do rather than what you can't do. Um, and just be really open to trying new things, whatever it is, collage, photography, film, um, just experiment. and. Not everything needs to be perfect um, and you don't always need to know what you're doing. I definitely didn't throughout my project. Um, but yeah, I think 
what this time has taught me is that um, you can create something interesting with very little means and my project has actually benefited um, from this in terms of, you know, I've just been working with what's around me and it's worked really well and sometimes less is more and yeah, I've enjoyed the simple raw processes that I've been working with. So, yeah. I know it's hard because you do feel like you're stuck in a bit of a rut and that you can't collaborate with people who you would normally collaborate with and you do feel very restricted but I feel like, especially with my last project, it actually pushed me into a space that I wouldn't have worked in before and created the most interesting work that I've created so far. Um, so don't feel restricted by not being able to collaborate with people and not being able to, you know, use certain facilities that you would normally have available to you because being out of your comfort zone can actually make you create some more interesting work than what you've done before. So just use what you have, I think is my main advice. Use what you have because at the end of the day, you're a creative person and you like just create instinctively with what you have around you. You don't actually need a team of people all the time to make successful work. The main advice I'd give to any creatives or students struggling to adjust to the new normal is definitely to just stay true to yourself. Don't feel hindered by any expectations of the way we should be creating work. Just find your own avenue and find your own lane. And if you have core values that are inherent within your aesthetic, make sure they're still a focal point of your creative process. And don't be afraid to take measured risk and reach outside your comfort zone because that's just another way we can evolve. <laughs> I know loads of art students are trying to make a crazy excuses to not going uni, <laughs> so my, I so I uh, even I I, I thought uh, I was uh, considering or I was thinking about this issue. Why, like the reason why our students don't want to go the uni, even though they have loads of like lots of plenty of the good information that they they have to learn or it's really essential like information I I thought I think that because um, I think they tend to dream other dream other stream um, like that's why I wanted to say dream your dream not others that's gonna make your motivation and your life's gonna be changed Throughout these past three years, I have learned to develop myself immensely. Thanks to all the tutors and the technicians that have accompanied me and my colleagues during this journey. They have indirectly taught us how to create a space for ourselves in the industry that we shouldn't be afraid to explore new territory with our practices, which is something I will definitely hold on to for my future work. Um, I think as a perfectionist, I can sometimes find it hard when an idea that I've planned doesn't work out, but I've definitely learned not to get too disheartened by it. And yeah, it's important for me to keep in mind that not every idea is gonna work out and I just have to have resilience and trust in the process that it will, it will work out in the end. Um, and yeah, also some of my best ideas have turned out just to be through trial and error and spontaneity. So. Yeah, um, just always being willing to try new things and new ways of working and not being too rigid with how I work. Yeah, that's important. I feel like at the start I was really worried. I was worried about not finishing my degree, etc. But I think I've become more confident in my own practice through only having myself to rely on. So um, I'm just going to take forward that, just keep pushing your boundaries and working outside of your comfort zone because I think that creates the most in interesting work. Moving forward with my creative practice, I definitely just want to continue to grow and explore new ways of working I've begun to incorporate within understanding self. Overcoming a multitude of creative and academic challenges combined has reinstalled a confidence within myself professionally. I really just want to nurture this confidence with a humble approach and share positive energy with others through future collaborations. I will study more about like philosophy and like astrology, computer science, manga, psychology, culture, history, religion, 
music so i will combine them all together because i believe that in order to make a new 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 style in fashion you have to you should be far away from the fashion it, it is really contradiction but um, this way is really um, work yeah this way is really proper way i think yeah uh thanks for <laughs> thanks for like listening my opinion